Praise the name of the Lord. God is so good. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. And we rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. Friends, it's harvest time. And we are going to just celebrate in the presence of the Lord, thanking Him for His goodness, His mercy, His grace, and that He gives us grace to be a blessing to wherever we go. So let's continue to just worship and praise the Lord, and we just say thank you to the Lord for His goodness. We just also want to give uh, um, congratulations to Clifford and Yvonne. Uh, their daughter got married in America uh, last night or yesterday, and uh, we just rejoice. Joy is so happy, and uh, we just uh, celebrate with Joy and Nick, and uh, it was so awesome in Jesus' mighty name. So well done, Cliff. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. I want to welcome those that are also online with us. God bless you. And we know that you're going to be blessed in Jesus' name. Let's lift our hands to heaven as we open up this service in prayer. Father, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for this day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, and we will be glad and we will rejoice in it. Thank you, Father, that you take over this service right now. Lord God, I pray that you're going to continue to bless this church, uh, bless this ministry. Thank you, Father God, that these the, the message will go far and wide, Lord God, will be preached, uh, Lord God, to the ends of the earth. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, take over now, Lord God. Have your perfect will and way I pray in the mighty name of Jesus and we say thank you for your goodness those that are not well touch them heal them Lord God I thank you Lord God that healing will spring forth in their bodies and in their lives I pray in Jesus mighty name and everybody said amen, amen and amen I want you to wave at somebody and welcome them hallelujah God bless you let's go for it guys amen
if you go to me, you will answer. If you run to me, you will run to us. If you lift our hands, you will lift us. Father God, with 750 people this morning, and we can fill our church, and thank you, Father God, that you are doing mighty works in our land this morning. Father God, thank you that as we come on bended knee this morning, Father God, and pray for our land, Father God, we rend our hearts, you will heal our land, Father God, you will cleanse our hearts, and I thank you, Father God, that going forward, we will want to do nothing but your work, Father God, and I thank you for the work that you have done, Father God. Thank you that you lead us and you guide us and you direct us into greatness, Father God. Hallelujah. We lift our hands and worship to you this morning, Father God. Hallelujah. Our beloved Father, please come down and meet us. We are waiting on your touch. Open up your heaven.
Jesus above every other name. The name of Jesus. I want you to just say that name. Jesus. Declare Jesus over your life. Declare Jesus over your life. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh Jesus. Itadna raba boshe ke bebe yanda, ki raba bonda, ki raba bonda rebe isa raba bonda rehitaba, randi kachonda ratanda, rushi karaba bonda rehekanda, lushi ki raba babanda. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All glory to the Lord, for He alone is worthy of all praise. Give Him adoration, give Him praise. Magnify His name in this house. For the Lord says, I'll never leave nor forsake you. He says, I am the one that will bring you through, says the Lord your God. I am the one that created you. I am the one that molded you and made you into who you are. He says, I breathe the breath of life into you. I knew you from the foundations of the earth. He says, I know you better than you know yourself. Put your faith and your trust in me, says the Lord your God. For he says, I love you with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you are so good to us. Thank you, Lord. You never leave nor forsake us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. I bless you glorify you. Thank you, Lord God. Right now, Lord God, that you meet each one at the point of their need, I pray. Lord God, we pray for Tubile, Lord God, that you just touch her. Just touch her now from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, I pray. Let healing spring over her body and over her life. Oh, Father God, I just pray, Lord God, those that are not well, and if there's somebody that's not well, maybe you want to stand in the gap for somebody, just lift up your hand. Let's pray for them right now. Let's come into agreement right now. There are those that are suffering. There are those that are facing situations in their life that they it's so overwhelming they cannot deal with it. Let's believe God right now as we come. And we, we believe God for the miraculous right now. Oh, I just sense there's somebody here today. You've got, you've got pain in your back. God says, by His stripes you are healed. You believe God for your healing. Your healing will spring forth right now. There's somebody here. You've got jaw problems. Jaw problems. You've got pain in your jaw. You've got pain here in your jaw. God wants to heal you right now. As you begin to just lift up your hands to heaven, just begin to receive your healing right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, there's somebody, you've got pain here in your arms. You can't even bend your arms properly. God wants to heal you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two weeks ago, somebody got a report about breast cancer. That cancer is gone in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. By the stripes of Jesus, uh, healing is springing forth right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, heal that back, Lord God. Heal that arm. Lord God, oh, Lord God, we come against cancer in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Heal that jaw. Heal that jaw. Oh, oh, Lord God, let all of that infection go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that by your stripes we are healed. Thank you that you touch to be there right now from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. 
Lord God, any other prayers and needs, we bring them before you right now. There's nothing impossible with you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that by your stripes we are healed. We receive your healing power. By your stripes we are healed. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, let the healing rain. Let the healing rain fall upon you right now. Hallelujah. Just let healing spring forth right now. Lord God, those that are facing situations that are impossible, heal them right now. There are those that with the broken hearts. Heal them, I pray. impossible with God. Trust the Lord right now. Say, Lord, I receive. I receive your blessing of healing. I receive your blessings now. Hallelujah. The devil has been trying to oppress people. He's been trying to hold you back right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. Feel those chains breaking right now. The oppressed are set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, let healing, healing spread forth. Oh, deliverance. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord God. I bless you, Lord God. For you alone are worthy. You're worthy of all praise. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands to heaven. The Lord says that we are the top and not the bottom. The Lord says we are the front and not the back. The Lord says to us, we, He is for us and not against us. The Lord says to us that by His stripes we are healed. The Lord says that we are the redeemed, and the redeemed shall say so. Hallelujah. The Lord is for us and not against us. Hallelujah. Greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Give Him glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. Father, today... Lord God, we just pray, Father God, for the congregations all across South Africa and across the earth. Let the church of the Lord Jesus Christ grow from strength to strength. Thank you, Lord God, that we will proclaim the goodness of God. We thank you for this now in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I just want to... I see we've got some birthdays happening this week, and uh, wow, we've got a list, eh? From today, we've got uh, Sandra Moon's birthday, we've got Toko Molefe's birthday on the 6th, we've also got on the 6th Vimla, Auntie Vimla Duki, hallelujah, we've got also on the 6th, we've got Nella Siswe, Sitole, on the 6th, we've got Erwin Stoffels, we've got Cedric, also your one is on the 6th, hallelujah, may the Lord... Hey, October is a good month for a birthday, hey? Mine's on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. On the 6th is also Cedric. On the 7th is we've got Cynthia M. Keys. On the 8th, we've got Selewe Mashlatsi. On the 9th, we've got Priya Naidu. On the 10th, we've got Busa Siwe Mabasu. We've got Zimbeni Maz Mazeti. And there's a guy by the name of Pastor Jock Lois that is having his birthday as well. 10th of the 10th, hallelujah. And then we've got some anniversaries. We've got uh, Deva and Lynette, may the Lord richly bless you. And also Regina Sampson, also on the 10th. It's awesome, friends. God is so good. And we're going to just pray for those birthdays and pray for God's richest blessings right now. Father, we want to say thank you. 
that we can celebrate those birthdays, giving glory and honor to you. Lord, much strength and wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Lord, give us many more years of strength and health and wisdom. Lord God, let us do even greater exploits. Lord God, I ask you, Father God, for your blessing upon each one. Sandra, Torko, Vimla, Nila Sizwe, Lord Irwin, Cedric, Cynthia, Selewe, Priya, Busasiwe, Zimbeni, and myself, Lord God. I pray, Father God, you'll bless those birthdays. Give us the desires of your heart, I pray. And I thank you, Father God, that, Lord, that you bless us and give us the desires of our heart. We pray for Deva and Lynette on their anniversary on the 10th on Sunday. We pray for Regina Sampson. We pray, Father God, that that, maybe we don't know those that are online that are having birthdays. Bless them. Keep them. Lead them. Guard them and direct them. I ask you, Father God, for your richest blessings upon every one of us. I pray this now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, musicians and singers. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, friends, we're going to do the offering at the end of the the sermon because I'm going to be ministering on harvest. So we have an understanding of what harvest is all about. Now, we're going to do it a little bit different. As you know, it's Harvest Sunday, and this church is very much accustomed to bringing fruit and vegetables and non-perishables, but it's because of the situations we're finding ourselves in, we've got to do things a little bit more different, okay? But we don't let it hold us back, and so we're wanting to, uh, some have already helped us to do that, but the Lord's Pantry, which is the cupboard and the, the room that we stock food in, that's the non-perishable items, is it got totally depleted over COVID. Uh, totally. <laughs> Friends, there was just nothing. It was pelile, finished, nothing. And uh, so we're just trusting the Lord. Uh, that we just say thank you to the Lord that he has helped us to maintain throughout this time. But we want to restock it so that we can help when there are needs. There's not only needs that happen here on a Sunday. There are needs throughout the week. Uh, friends, every day, uh, Christopher and myself are meeting with people Uh, Christopher, you might not know him, but he is the caretaker of the church with me here during the week. And we meet with people every week, every day. There's needs here in the community. And we try and help as best possible. Um, But we cannot help if we have got nothing in the cupboard. And uh, I believe that we can fill that cupboard to overflowing. So what we're doing this year uh, to make it a little bit different is that That side over there, you'll see there on the table, that is there for the harvest. And that I ask you to separate from your tithes and your offering to put something towards the harvest. Then that monies will be used, uh, Lorna and Yvonne, and then we'll go and make sure that that is properly stocked over and above what came in also in the non-perishable items. So I encourage you to help us today. We want to do this for the glory of God. So that we can help. I don't like to have to always say no. uh, But uh, God has been good that we've had to keep the no's to the minimal. (laughs) Hallelujah. And uh, God always supplies. And he never leave nor forsake us. He is faithful. So help us today. And when we get to the time of giving, you'll just take one little extra walk to that side. And those two baskets will be separated for that purpose. And uh, those that are dealing with the the monies, they'll put it separate so that that can go towards that. So help us with that. It would really uh, go a long way in being a blessing. Do you know that we are blessed to be a blessing? Can you say that with me? We are blessed to be a blessing. And what we make happen for others, God will make happen for us. Did you hear what I said? What we make happen for others is what God will make happen for us. It's the same as what the scripture says. What we sow, we will reap. And so if you've got your Bible today, uh, the message is entitled, Thank you, Lord, for the harvest from the seeds we have sown. On my tithe and offering um, envelope, and uh, every week I put a name my seed. A name my seed. I say, Lord, thank you for the harvest from the seed I'm sowing. So that when that 
Harvest comes knocking on my door. I know I sowed a seed for that. I named my seed. And I want to encourage you here today to thank the Lord for the harvest from the seeds you have sown. Have you kept on sowing seed? Have you kept on putting seed in the ground? Have you kept on putting seed into the work of the Lord so that you can see a bountiful harvest in your life? And we see here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, and it says here, And the earth brought forth grass and herb, yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Let's have a look at it in the King James Version, and it puts it like this. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. There is power in sowing seeds. There is power in the seed. God put power inside the seed. And I want you to know, friends, as I minister today, that there is power in your seed. What you sow and what you name and what you declare over your seed, you'll see begin, you'll begin to see great harvests in Jesus' name. And long after Moses described Almighty God as creating life to reproduce after its own kind, the Apostle Paul, and as I preach this message, I'm going to give you the message that Paul gave to the different, different churches, but also the message is for us. So when I go through it, I'm going to say Paul reminded the Galatians and us. I want you to be part of the message today because the message was spoken those many years ago, but it is for us today. And I want you to know that God's Word will not return void, but will first accomplish the purpose for which it has been sent, and it will prosper in what it has been sent to do. And I pray, Father God, that as I share your Word today, let me not be seen, but Christ in me, the hope of glory. I pray, Lord God, that, Lord, that your anointing will be upon this sermon. I pray, Lord God, that you'll give us hearts to receive what the Holy Spirit is speaking to the church today. And I thank you for this now, in Jesus' mighty name. The Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, he reminds the Galatians and he reminds us of other ways in which we get to plant. Do you know that God has called us to be a planter of seed? And he says, and he puts it like this, don't be misled. Remember that you cannot ignore God and get away with it. There are many in today's life that are trying to ignore God. They're ignoring the prompting of the Spirit of God. But you'll never get away with it. You'll never be able to hide from God. You'll never be able to run from God. The Scripture puts it like this. It says, God is not mocked. For what you sow, you will reap. What you sow, you will reap. You'll always reap what you sow. So make sure that you're putting in good seed. Make sure that you're putting in good seed that you're going to reap a good harvest. If anybody's ever looked at the the creed of the Alcoholics Anonymous, they express this principle a little differently, but they are talking about a parallel idea when they remind us that one definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. What you sow, you're going to reap. And so we must be very aware that the seeds we sow must be good seeds. In other words, an otherwise intelligent person can have an idea or an area of their life that absolutely makes no sense. Friends, when we sow our seeds, we must sow those seeds. And there must be good seeds. Because what we sow, we're going to reap. Even though we would never try to get tomatoes by planting potatoes, 
And there are many people that are trying to do that. They're planting tomatoes and they're expecting potatoes. When you plant your seed, have an expectancy. For what you sow, you're going to reap. And in moments and areas of weakness, we may impulsively and intentionally forget that like produces like. What we sow, the Bible says, we will reap. And so make sure that you're putting in the right seed. Make sure that you're being thoughtful of the seed that you're sowing. Make sure that it's not only of a financial and a monetary seed, but it is of our kindness and of our mercy. If you show mercy, you'll reap mercy. You show kindness, you'll reap kindness. You know, friends, the Bible is very true. That what we sow, we will reap. And you see, fruit does not form quickly. It takes time. How many of you know that you can put a seed in for an apple, but you're only going to get the apple tree after some time? It takes time. And the Bible says there's seed, time, and harvest. The Apostle Paul acknowledged the need to work and to wait. How many of you know that we must work and we must work with our hands and we must do the, 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 the job? But the Bible says that we must also wait. And here the Apostle Paul says to the Galatians and to us. Everybody wave at somebody and say, and to us. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 8 he says, those who live only to satisfy their own desires will harvest the consequences of decay and death. How many of you know that there are consequences to the things that you sow? If you sow the wrong things, you're going to reap the consequences. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. Oh, let, us, let our harvest be blessed. Let our harvest, Lord, be full of life. The Apostle Paul went on to tell the Galatians and us. In verse 9 it says, So don't get tired of doing what is good. And many times we have found that people have got tired, even over this COVID, in doing good. But don't give up. I commend those that have just kept on. I've had people come to my gate and just kept on being a blessing. Pastor, is this somebody that needs bread? Here's some bread. And just kept on. Even when the tough times have been there, they've just kept on. People have come and they've said, Pastor, can I help with this? Not giving up. Not allowing the circumstances of life to affect your giving and your planting of seed. Friends, it's so awesome what the Bible says here. So don't get tired of doing what is good. Don't get discouraged and don't give up. The Bible says don't get so discouraged that you give up. Do you know that that's the plan of the devil is to make you give up? But God doesn't want you to give up. God wants you to keep on. Don't get so discouraged that you give up. For we will reap a harvest of blessing at the appropriate time. Let us reap a harvest of blessing. How many of you are ready for some blessing? Hallelujah. Can you put up your hands? Oh, I'm ready for some blessing. You see, you know, no farmer gets from his field the fast food. And you know what? We've grown up very much in a fast food. <laughs> you know, food does come from the ground. It doesn't come from a vending machine. It does come from hard work being put into the ground where the farmer has to wait and the farmer's got to like toil in that ground. It doesn't just come from the supermarket. How many of you know that? Can we have an amen on that? It comes from hard work. So no farmer gets from the, his field the fast food that we expect to when we put money in a vending machine, somebody had to work hard to get that working. Harvests do not spring quickly from the ground. That takes time, takes toil, takes working, takes watering. It's only with time. Everybody say time. 
It's only with time, with work, and with patience that we get the results that we are looking for. And anybody that is saying, well, I'm, I'm giving up. No, friends, don't. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. The Word of the Lord encourages us to press on to the mark of the high calling of God. Don't give up sowing seed. Don't give up being good. Don't let the situation and the circumstances of this COVID pandemic cause you to become an ugly person. Don't let it cause you to become a, such a frustrated person that you cannot be a blessing. Because the Bible says that we are blessed to be a blessing. Don't let it change your character. Let, let us come out of this better than what we ever were. Can we have an amen on that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, those who live off the land do not intentionally plant weeds to compete with their crops. Nor does a person of faith deliberately try to grow problems. How many of you I avoid problems? But we, never, we don't go out to get problems. Jesus the Christ reminds us in His parables. Trouble happens in both the field and in our faith. And when we begin to realize that the Lord knows us better than we know ourselves, we'll begin to trust Him and say, Lord, You said You will make a way of escape for us. You will make a way for us to get through this. But troubles do happen in both the field and in our faith. And some of our problems are part of the natural wear and tear of life. If you keep on knocking at your body, eventually it's going to play up when you get older. Many times we are what we eat. Many times when we, we've been told, don't do that, and we keep on doing it, the old wear and tear on our body, later on, you ow, ina. You know those enas and awas come from wear and tear. And some come from the in interference of a, a very real enemy, the devil. The Bible says the devil goes around as a roaring lion seeking those that he may devour. But I also want to say this. Sometimes our troubles and our problems come from the seeds that we have sown. Sometimes we, have, we don't realize and sometimes we don't want to always admit that we are getting what we've sown. We are getting what we've sown, the seeds we've sown. And that's why if you have kept on being kind, if you have kept on being generous, if you have kept on being uh, who God has called you to be, when that evil thing comes and knocks on your door, you say, I will not take delivery. Can we all say amen to that? You do not have to take, that's not, the, that's, not the, that's not the seed I've sown. I always say that. When somebody's ugly to me or somebody's uh, unkind to me or somebody's withholding, I say, Lord, that's not the seed I sowed. That's not my harvest. It maybe belongs to the neighbor, but they're not my harvest. You got the wrong address. It's time that you got to start getting a bit more vocal and tell that delivery, uh, that demon that tries to come and bring that discouragement and that despondency and that unkind word. You got the wrong address. Can you do that? You've got the wrong address. It's time you start telling the devil where to get off. Don't invite him in for tea. Well, let's come and have a look. Let's Google and let's see where that can fit into my life. No, I don't want it. I don't want that evil. That's not the seed I sowed. And I reject that evil harvest. Because that's not the seed I have sown. That's why you've got to name your seed. Know the seed that you put into the ground of your life. And you'll start to see the devil will not be able to give you a package that does not belong for you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. God, you're so good. We must remind ourselves, as important as it may be for us to work the soil, to plant, to water, and to feed, there's only so much that we can do. 
We have got to do our part. But we must also be the ones that must wait. We must be patient. We must work and keep on working. Keep on praying. Keep on thanking the Lord. Do you know that once I've put a seed in the ground, once I've planted a financial seed and I've named it, I put it on my envelope, I name it on there. I keep on thanking the Lord for the harvest until it comes. Till it comes. The first thing when I hear there's a, there's a need, there's a need maybe in my family, I start to sow seed. I will wait for confirmation that God wants me to give there, God wants me to put it there, God wants me to do that, and I just start sowing seed, and I name it. Even if it's through my bank, I get my EFT print out there, whoop, whoop, and I write on it what that seed is. And I put it in my file, and I know what seed I've sown. I'm giving you some gems here today, friends. Because you see, if you're going to be a sower like this, and it lands over there, what's going to come eat it up? The birds. What's going to land on the hard ground? Sow your seed. Be specific. What was that thing called? That 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 seed thing, Isaac. That we saw that they plant. It plants it individually. Like it comes off. Then whoop! And it makes it specific. It plants like this. And when the pl- farmer looks at the end of the day, he knows exactly what's in the ground. Do you know that a farmer also can do a test on their seed and on their lands? And they can know exactly when their harvest is going to come. And when they must be get, get up early and work late until the night. Because you cannot play games with the harvest. When the harvest is here, we've got to be the reapers. We've got to get out into the harvest and go do what God has called us to do. See, the Apostle Paul tells the church in Corinth and he tells us, In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7, the ones who do the planting or the watering aren't important. So many times we think, well, we're the ones that we're keeping the church going. We're the important ones. No, friends. It's all about God. I said it's all about God. God gives us the privilege. He gives us the opportunity to be a sower. Hallelujah. He is the one that must get all the glory, but it says here, The ones who do the planting or the watering aren't important. But God is important. Everybody say, God is important. God is important. And when we have that mindset, whenever you put a seed in, you say, God, you are important. This is your work. Friends, I've been here for 23 years as the pastor of this church. It's not my church. It's God's church. I'm just a servant in the house of God. I get excited when things happen. But it's God's church. And God will grow His church. And God will get all the glory. Hallelujah. And I I just count it a privilege to be part of the work of God here in Woodlands for Gospel Church of God. I get excited, man. Woo! And says, yeah, but God is important because He is the one who makes the seed grow. When we have that mindset, God, it's all about you. It's not about me. It's about you, Lord. He gives us the privilege about sowing that seed. He gives us the privilege of being able to name that seed so that when that harvest comes, we can say, all glory to God. And right up until the time that it comes, you keep on giving thanksgiving to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the harvest from the seeds we have sown. I want to encourage you to write that little statement down and start naming your seed, and you'll start seeing a tremendous change in your harvest that are coming your way. Thank you, Lord, for the harvest from the seeds we have sown. When it's personal, I have sown. I'm giving it as unto you. 
It means that you're just saying thank you to the Lord. You're submitting to God, saying, Lord, your will, not my will, be done. He's the one that makes the seed grow. And just as farmers learn how to depend upon the weather, and how many of you know that the weather can be unpredictable? <laughs> just take this last week, you know. <laughs> the weather can be so unpredictable, and you can't control it. But how many of you know that the Lord of the harvest is not us, it is God, and God is in control? Lord, let my attitude be that I'll give glory to you, that you are in control. God doesn't want us to cry. He wants us to be glad. That's what a harvest brings. It brings gladness. The, Paul, uh, the apostle Paul tells the Galatians and us, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 says, But when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, He will produce this kind of fruit in us. He will produce this kind of fruit in us. You see, you can strive to be this kind of person in your own strength, and you'll never be able to achieve it. But when He produces this kind of fruit in us, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. Here, there is no conflict with the law. When God produces that fruit in us, whoo, friends, it does amazing things. Then it becomes like automatic in us. Yes, it takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of determination. It takes a lot, a lot of discipline that I'm going to be who God has called me to be. I'm going to be kind. I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to be peaceful. I'm going to be patient. It is for this very reason that Jesus the Christ said as recorded by the beloved disciple and the apostle John in John chapter 15 verse 4. He says, remain in me. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and there's many that have been severed from the vine or even detached themselves from the vine, you'll never produce fruit if you're not attached to Jesus Christ, the true vine. You see, friends, we are the branches. He's the vine. It's the vine that is connected to the root, and the root produces, brings up nourishment for the branches. But the branch that is severed from the vine will die. The Bible says, you cannot be fruitful apart from me. If you want to produce fruit, you must be in Christ. You must remain in Christ. When you plant your seed, yes, name your seed. When you plant your seed, know that we are the ones that have been called to plant. We have been called to water, but it is God that gets the glory. It is God that brings the growth. See, brothers and sisters in Christ, we must remain in a powerful relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If we're going to be fruit bearers, we must be in a, a solid relationship with Him, a powerful one. We must be in a relationship that produces a harvest for which we cannot take rightful ownership or credit. We must always be able to turn around and say, oh, glory to God. Thanks be to God. He's the one that has brought this to pass in my life. And the Apostle Paul tells the church at Philippi and us. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, he says, Dear, Dearest friends, you were always so careful to follow my instructions when I was with you. Now that I'm away, you must be more careful to put into action God's saving work in your lives. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desires to obey Him and the power to do what pleases Him. You see, friends, we cannot only serve the Lord when everybody else is watching. God wants to see that we're serving Him when nobody is watching. But I want you to know something, that God knows everything we do in secret. God knows everything we say. You cannot hide anything from God. 
And as I preach this morning, know that just as Almighty God, the God of the harvest, He deserves thanks when He produces favorable conditions for fruit and vegetables. So He, that every, for every reason, thanks must be given to Him when He makes a change in our heart. You know, whatever God does in us, we must be thankful to Him because it's nothing we can do. God only gives us the privilege of sowing those seeds. And today I pray that you have considered sowing a seed into the things of the anointing. Sowing a seed not only to feed people, but a seed to also see the ministry extended. A seed to see the gospel extended to the ends of the earth. For he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Go to the highways and the byways. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the outermost parts of the earth. When Almighty God shows us favor, we plant seeds of love and kindness into the lives of others. You know, friends, one little kind word from you can go a long way. Isaac and myself on the other the other day on the way to his work. There was a lady never greets us, stays up from us and always woo, off she goes. Never greets. But the other day, I saw her pull out and then I pulled out of our driveway and I was behind her, and her car stopped. And this lady got out of her car, friends. She, I think she was having a heart attack. She was sweating. She was in a bad way. And I op opened up the window and I said, My dear, I think you need to go home. Can I phone your husband, Brian? And you know, friends, such a lightness came upon her that somebody showed her kindness. Friends, just a little kind word can save somebody's life. And she said, immediately I'm going to call for the ambulance or the doctor. But that saved somebody's life. Just that kind word. That somebody cared. Well, I know, friends, many of us have that choice every day. To be kind or just to ignore. Can I encourage you as your pastor, go and be kind. Go and be gentle. Go and be loving. Go and be generous. Go and be a blessing wherever you go. Because you know what, friends? You're going to meet some people along the way that you're going to truly be able to be a blessing to. And I encourage you, take the opportunity every day to go and be a blessing. What we need to keep utmost in our minds is the fact that growing in the likeness of Jesus Christ is neither quick nor natural. It takes hard work. It takes some acts of kindness. It takes some acts of love. And it takes some seed sowing and knowing what you've planted in your, in your vineyard. Keep on sowing seed. I want to read for you the words of that song called It's Harvest Time. I want you to close your eyes, bow your heads. The words go like this. See the grain yellow in the field. The setting sun shines down to reveal. Pick up your sickle. Don't hesitate. If we delay, we're sure to be late the harvest doesn't wait for anyone don't be late the clocks keeps ticking and we're behind it's harvest time there are those out there and they are searching no joy no peace and they are hurting we must bring them in it's harvest time we have the message of hope and mercy the well of grace will flow for, for the thirsty. The sun is going down and it's harvest time. 
The chorus goes like this. Can't you hear the many voices crying? No hope, no God. They're dying in their sin. We can't afford to stop our preaching. On the other hand, we can't stop reaching out to them. We must bring them in. It is harvest time. And friends, as we sit here today and we've heard this message, I pray that you will bring a harvest. I pray that you will plant a seed for a harvest. Let us fill up this Lord's pantry, cupboards and room. Let's fill it up so that we can be a blessing. And every person that has reached through that, you have had a part of it by sowing a seed. But I want to also encourage you today, just a few more scriptures, just to encourage you. Harvest comes by responding to God. Will you respond today? The Bible says in Genesis 8.22, While the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, sun and uh, day and night shall not cease. What is harvest? It's the blessing of the Lord. Psalm 65, verse 11 through to 13 says, You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths drip with abundance. They drop on the pastures of the wilderness, and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks, uh, and the valleys are also covered with grain. They shout for joy. They also sing. See, he is the God of the harvest time. And God's work must go on. What is harvest is, is about the faithfulness of the Lord. How faithful has God been to you? Whilst the earth remains seed time and harvest, it will never cease. This is a promise of God, and God never breaks a promise. God binds himself in love to bless us in grace. What is harvest time? It is communion with the Lord. John 4, 35 to 38 says, Do you not say, there's still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. The harvests are out there, friends. There are many people going to a lost eternity, going to hell because Nobody wants to go and reap that harvest. And you know, friends, as I said earlier, when the farmer knows that this is hard, there's no more time for delay. The farmer's got to make sure that whether they're working through to the midnight hour or they're working into the early hours of the morning, they work until that far harvest is reaped. Because if a rain comes or a storm of life comes and they have not reaped that harvest, they will lose that whole harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, but that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. When we look upon the fields of man, the man's needs, let the eyes of your heart be the heart of Christ. Let us be moved as we sow today. Let us be moved to have fellowship and communion with the Lord and with others. Let us be moved today that the seed we sow can impact somebody else's life. And I encourage you today, before we go to giving, give your life to Christ. With every head bowed, every eye closed, there may be somebody here today, maybe there's somebody online. You have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you've distanced yourself from Him. You've walked away from Him. You've maybe got disappointed. You've maybe become depressed. Maybe you're sitting in the doldrums. It's time for you to come back to the Lord and surrender your life to Him. It's time to surrender and give your life over to Him. 
I want to ask you today, have you come to that place in your spiritual life that if you had to die today, do you know where you're going to spend eternity? And suppose you had to die and you had to stand before Almighty God and He had to ask you, why should I allow you into my heaven? What would you say? Where do you stand with the Lord right now? Are you ready to meet the Lord? Or are you going to be judged for eternity? Burning in the lake of fire. Today is the day of salvation, my friends. And if there's somebody that does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, maybe there's somebody that's backslidden. It's time for you to come back. If there's somebody here today hearing this message and you want to respond, I want to encourage you, lift up your hands. The Bible says that every one of us that is righteous, and if you have not got that assurance in your heart that you're going to heaven, then I want to encourage you, make that decision today. For the Bible says that if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sin. Won't you do it today and surrender your life? If there's somebody here in the auditorium that would like to pray the sinner's prayer, lift up your hand. I see that hand. If there's somebody that would like to pray, I see that hand. Is there somebody here in the middle? Somebody here on the right-hand side? You'd like to pray the sinner's prayer and you give your life to Christ. Don't leave this place without Jesus. Jesus loves you. Jesus died on the cross for you. Maybe there's somebody online. Make that decision right now. Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for you. Give Him your heart and your life. Do it today. Acknowledge Him as the Lord of your life. Those that have put up their hand, I'm going to ask you, just stand where you're standing. Come stand up there, big boy. Just stand where you are. Stand up. Stand up. If there's anybody else that would like to pray that prayer, just stand up right now. We want to pray with you. We want to pray with you. There in your home, stand up from that sofa. Stand up from that couch. And let's pray this prayer with sincerity. I want you to bow your heads. Congregation, I want you to stretch out your hands to those that are, are standing right now. And pray with them. Pray with them. We're going to be praying with you, sir. We're going to be praying with you, young man. I'm going to pray with you. Believe. And I want you to say this prayer with us. And I want you to say it out loud. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I confess I am a sinner. I can't save myself. I need you, Lord Jesus. I repent of my sin. I invite you into my heart and into my life today. Take my sin away from me and take my name out of the book of judgment and write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I give you my heart and my life today. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a praise offering. God bless you You guys. May be seated. I want to encourage you. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Pray. Pray every day. Talk to God. Tell Him what's on your heart. Get into church. It's good to be in church. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a praise offering? Hallelujah. It's good to be in church. Hallelujah. Yes, we've got all of the regulation. We do everything. But it's so good to be in the church of the Most High God. S serving the Lord together. Having fellowship. The Bible says we must not neglect the fellowship of the saints. Let me tell you something, friends. It's important what we're doing here to be at church. It's lovely having online. It's lovely, but it's not the same as being in the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. God is so good. And we just say thank you to the Lord that we can continue with here in the house of God and also online. And we know that God's going to continue to bless. It's reaching to many parts of the world to many homes, to many families, in Jesus' name. But I want to say to the congregation, please come home and come and enjoy fellowship with us once again. We love you. There's lots of place for you, and you will be safe, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Friends, we're going to give as unto the Lord. 
If you haven't maybe set something aside for giving towards the Harvest Sunday, towards putting food into the cupboards, then I'm going to ask for you to separate something, put it in there. If you're wanting an envelope, there are envelopes and Arena will hand around. But these baskets down the front here, that's for our normal tithes and offerings. Friends, let us work together. That over there is separate. They will separate that, will be not in this, that side over there, Narina. On this side, just keep your hand up. Narina will see your hand. There you are. Praise the Lord. Somebody help Narina. Give, we need some hands, please. Thank you. Hands on deck. Praise God. Uh, this side over here, thanks. There you are in the back row. Thank you. Down the side here, Moses. Down in the middle. In the middle down here. In the back. In the back. There you are. Have get all the ladies running here. <laughs> here in the middle, here and here, Yolanda, down here. Gloria. There, next, yes, there's it. Praise the Lord. Did you get the back row there? Praise God. There in the middle, at the behind you, behind it, there, there's the second row. Praise God. I see that hand. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, friends, you remember what I said to you today. It's a privilege. There's another hand at the back, Yvonne. There by Zodwa. There we are. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, friends, let us be faithful. The Bible says, while the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest. Seed, time, and harvest. Cold and heat. Winter and summer. Day and night shall not cease. The Lord never did away with the time for seeding and for harvest. It's just about the time in between. Seed, time, and harvest. And God wants to bless. There are many people that we can minister through to, through your generosity. As we extend the gospel into homes touching people's lives, whether it be with helping with food, helping with spreading the gospel, you are part of that. And as we sow our seed, name your seed today. Thank you, Lord, for the harvest from the seeds we have sown. Thank you, Lord, for the harvest from the seed I'm about to sow. There written on. Thank you. Name the seed. Thank you, Lord, for the harvest from the seeds we sow today. Can we stand together as we prepare? I'm going to ask Narina. She'll stand down here. Clifford will be there. And then as you go past, there is the baskets there on the table. That is for harvest. Okay. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father God, for your blessing. We thank you, Father God, that, Lord, as we sow our seeds today, thank you, Lord God, that that Lord's pantry will be full. Thank you, Lord God, that there will be more than enough. Thank you, Lord God, that every need here in the church, Lord God, to spread the gospel, we thank you, Lord God, that there will be even greater opportunities in the days to come. I ask you for a full release of your blessing over the church and over every family and over every individual, I pray. Father, I just thank you that we can sow seeds to see every member of our church come back and start serving faithfully once again. Thank you for the harvest from the seeds we have sown. Thank you for the harvest from the seeds we are about to sow. And we give you thanks and praise and glory. I say thank you to you, Lord God, for you are good. You are so good to us, Lord. We love you, Lord God. We say thank you for this roof. We say thank you for this church. We say thank you for every chair. I say thank you, Lord, for every person, that every one of these chairs will be filled with people. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Woo-hoo! Praise the Lord. Let us come down to the front and let's come and give.
Father, let us lift our hands to heaven. The seed that leaves your hand will never leave your life. The seed that leaves your hand will never leave your life. God has got so much blessing that He wants to pour back into your life. Thank you, Lord, for the harvest from the seeds we have sown. I ask you now, Lord God, let these finances be used for the extension of your kingdom. Let that Lord's pantry be full, that many needs can be met. Thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, there will be no lack and no want in the house of God. There will be no lack and no want in everyone's home. There will be blessing. I thank you, Lord God, that you open up the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing that we will not have room enough to contain it. In Jesus' mighty name, and let it be used for the extension of your kingdom and for your glory, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name, give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. God bless you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Let me give you the announcements quickly. And I pray that everyone having their birthdays and anniversary will be so richly blessed by the Lord uh, this week. And we know God's going to bless in a tremendous way. And also, friends, don't forget... There's no uh, online Sunday school this week. It will be from next week. Next week, okay? And uh, Sunday school, we'll give you the announcements when the Sunday school goes back after the school. When does school go back? The 11th. The 11th. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Going back on the 11th, okay? Jason, just let us know there. Quick, quick. All right, on the 11th. Okay. <laughs> Well done, Jason. <laughs> Don't forget this evening, 5 p.m., is the Live at 5, uh, Spiritual Inspiration. Also, there will be communion this evening. Hallelujah. Now, friends, on Tuesday, uh, sorry about this last Tuesday. I've had so much on my mind. I had forgotten that there was going to be the, the school holidays. There's no uh, Bible study prayer meeting on Tuesday evening, this Tuesday as well. But there is online. We will put something on there for you. And also, uh, on Tuesday at 2.45, I'll be on preaching a, a message of faith on Highway Radio. Uh, Jesus saves, He heals, and He delivers. Highway Radio, 101.5 FM, and also on highwayradio.org.za. You can go on there, and I've asked them to please fix it up. It was having a bit of a glitch this last week. It's fixed up. Hallelujah. And we say thank you to the Lord that they've got their, that sorted out. So we give God praise. The, there will be no Bible study prayer meeting here at the church, but it will be also online. So be part of that. And I know God's going to bless in a tremendous way. Don't forget, next Sunday is the 10th of October. Hallelujah. And, and that's uh, 8.30. Powerful, life-changing worship and word. And also communion next Sunday morning. It's going to be an awesome time. And then at 5 p.m., Alive at 5, Spiritual Inspiration. We thank the Lord for His blessing. I think that's all the announcements, sweetheart. Can you come and declare the word of the Lord as we close off? Let's stand together. I want you to know we love you and appreciate you. It's so good to see all of you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's so good to see you. Now, remember when we're going out, we'll go out that door. From Greg, this side, we'll go out that door. They will open it up, and then from Miriam, this way, we'll go out the front door, okay? So thank you for all being part of what God is doing. It's exciting. Go and be a blessing. Go show that kindness. Sow good seeds, because you'll reap bountiful good harvests in Jesus' name. Remember, sow, and you'll reap good. Sow good, and you'll reap good. You'll see it happen. And name your seed so that you can identify your harvest in Jesus' name. Love you guys. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart.
Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, we lift our hands in your presence. And God, I know that when a surgeon cuts, you are the one that heals afterwards. And God, when a farmer puts a seed in the ground, you are the one that causes the seed to grow. And Father God, even as your children have sown seeds in this place this morning, I thank you as they have sown seeds, you are the one that will cause blessing to burst down in every corner of their life. Father God, I thank you that the word of God that has been spoken this morning will take root. It will be grounded in their very soul. It will become a part of who they are. And Lord Jesus, I pray that as we go our different ways, we'll be determined to do good and be kind to those around us. And we'll lift our hands and we'll say out loud that Jesus Christ is Lord. God bless you. I'm in love with a wonderful friend. Who gives life that never will end? Yes, he died on the tree to redeem you and me. This wonderful, wonderful friend. Yes, I love this wonderful friend. Jesus, you I'll serve to the end. Till the day that I see you in all your glory, my wonderful. Wonderful friend, there's a day when he's coming again. When this world our Jesus will reign, what a day that will be when Jesus we see. How wonderful, wonderful friend! Yes, I love this wonderful friend, Jesus. You are served to. Day that I see you in all your glory. 